Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am Krista Burns, your host at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event where we cover any sort of library related activities that may be of interest to Nebraska librarians. We have um, commission staff that do presentations and guest speakers, uh, which we have a mixture of today. Yay. Um, we do these sessions every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time Live and they are recorded so you can watch any of our archived sessions. Um, we have a huge list of them now and see if any of those uh, would be of interest to you after we do the live sessions. This morning we have our monthly Tech Talk with Michael Sowers. Hi Michael. Hi Krista. Hi. And he is actually at Internet Librarian in Monterey, California where I just came back from yesterday. Uh, very, very late. At night, last night, um, but he is there with a group of people that we hung with the last four days or so, and I'm going to switch over to you guys and see if we can see you. Can you see us? I see you, yes. Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> you can't see me, but I'm waving anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll take your word for it. Whatever. <laughs> um, so I'm Michael Sowers, uh, Technology Innovation Librarian at the Nebraska Library Commission. And uh, Krista, we're all missing you here. Um, oh. We're sorry, we have to go back home. Um, Thank you. We're glad we can do this. This is a this is a test for everybody. We haven't really done this uh, kind of live remote location thing before, so I, I uh, think it's working well so far. Anyway. <laughs> Um, I got some friends with me here, and I'm just going to go around and let them each introduce themselves, uh, say what they do and where they're from, and then we'll uh, start talking about conference. So, Louise, why don't you go ahead and go first? Okay. I'm Louise Alcorn. I'm the Reference Technology Librarian at the West Des Moines Public Library in Iowa, just next next door to you guys. Yep, just over the river. Just over the river. <laughs> <laughs> Through the woods? Uh, no. No woods. Okay. No woods. <laughs> okay. We don't have woods in the Midwest. Through the, yeah, through the corn. Right, exactly. <laughs> Uh, I'm Beth Hoffman, and I'm an independent technology and information training consultant from Tucson, Arizona. Okay, great. I am Amy Mather. I am the Adult Services and Programming Manager at Omaha Public Library. Okay, so we know where you live. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Jasmine. Um, I'm Jasmine Dean, and I am the Director of a Public Library in Chubbuck, Idaho. Great. So we got um, kind of across the board here. Uh, doing great. Okay. So um, some of us have presented. A lot of us have, uh, have attended some things. Um, and I guess just my first question is, is um, so far in your last couple of days here, oh, and we have one more Yay. guest attendee. All right. Well, we're going to, before we get uh, any further here, actually maybe sit between Beth and here. Um, yeah, one, one more person coming in. Um, yeah. Is that Jennifer back there? Okay. Yes, Jennifer's Hi, here. Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Hello. Um, just introduce yourself, name, rank, and serial number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jennifer Corber. I am a web services librarian at the Boston Public Library. I'm being a Bostonian and a New Yorker. One can walk at full speed and eat a bagel. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And we, we should also just clarify for everyone, and I'm sure if you can do the math, you can figure this out. We broadcast Encompass Live 10 a.m. Central Time, which means it is 8 a.m. for all of these wonderful people out in California. Yes. It, it Thank you so always, much, guys, for being able to make it up <laughs> this early. Yes, it's 07 Ugly. Is that, is that how you put it yesterday, uh, Jennifer? No. Oh, 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 07. Dark, oh, dark, 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 dark and ugly. ugly. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Although the sun is coming up behind us here, so uh, you probably can't see that. Um, so anyways, um, thank you all for attending. Where I was going is, is just anything um, that maybe stuck out from any of the presentations for you from the last couple of days. Uh, some of you here were here for pre-conferences. Um, I don't believe uh, many of us have been playing too much hooky from, from conference the last couple of days. Some little, maybe, not, not, not completely. I've seen you in rooms, so I, I know you've all been around. Um, if we're playing hooky, it's because we're standing out in the hallway talking to a colleague. Sure. Networking oh, yeah. and learning something probably almost more useful than what we would have learned. Oh, room, so. oh totally. Yeah, that yeah. counts. That, that, that definitely counts. I, was um, saying, I can actually, and the name given to that is the hallway track. The yes. hallway yes. track, yes, yes. Or yeah. lobby con. Lobby con. Very, very popular. Yes. Yeah. Not only popular, but often 
Not often, but occasionally more interesting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Having those momentary conversations that just spark new ideas and spark new presentations mm -hmm. and spark new avenues of thought. Mm -hmm. I just and, had one. And, and yeah. well, yes, yes. Well, and Jessica, you had one while, while you were getting your bagel. So yeah, you want to yeah. share that with us? Absolutely. Um, I did a cyber tour on QR codes and half of the cyber tour was very academic and focused because half of this year I was an academic science librarian at the Claremont Colleges and the other half of this year um, I've been the director of a small public library in a um, smaller section of Idaho. So I'm thinking about QR codes for public libraries and one of the things that I'm going to do to market my library when I return is work with the local historical society to get QR code images on buildings so that as people are walking through the historic district or other areas of interest they can click a QR code and have a web page presented to them with images, statements of how the age of a building um, and other interesting things and then of course links to the historical society in Pocatello and uh, my library. So that's Great. one of the takeaways that I'm going to do around Pocatello and Chubbuck and, and my district area with QR codes. Cool. That's a good cool. idea. Anybody else doing, is Omaha doing anything with QR codes yet? No, but I am totally inspired now. <laughs> because I actually sit on the board of the Forest <coughs> County Historical Society Board, so at the end, um, I, I'm also involved with a lot of other groups that this would be really awesome to do. And this, you know, I, my, my biggest takeaway from the conference has been sort of like thinking about the QR codes and its application and the whole augmented reality kind of um, thing to do. Because basically. Well, and I actually got the uh, interesting idea. Um, I had been hearing about QR codes for a while and how they've been using libraries, mostly academic, as, as Jez mentioned. But I actually got a piece of mail the other day that was from my alumni association at, mm -hmm. at my co undergrad college. And on the back of the envelope was a QR code. And so you didn't even have to open the envelope. You know, I knew it was a fundraising letter because that's all I ever get from them. But, you know, you could scan the QR code, go straight to the fundraising thing. And I was thinking about this later that day and thought, wow, our friends could use this. And, in fact, they could save on postage because they could just send a postcard mm -hmm. with a QR code on it, which is going to save them a bundle instead of send, sending a whole envelope with, you know, everything in there. They could just send this um, out. Or they could even, you know, there's even ways to potentially email them out. So we do have an email list now for the friends. So um, we're always looking for new ways for them to market because they've, they've, had, they've struggled with that for a while in terms of how to market um, and get more donors. They've kind of been a steady level of donors. So I thought that, would, that might be kind of a fun techie thing. And there's a couple of techie types on the Friends board now. So. Now, I almost wonder, though, if you, if you were to send out a postcard like that to, to the mailing list, uh, how many um, confused responses you might get as to what the heck did you but just that's send actually, that actually, <laughs> But that sparks a conversation. So sure. if you put on there, you know, Westwood Library Friends Foundation, this is a Q QR code, um, you know, more, in more information here. You know, you can always mm -hmm. give them that and then kind of get them started, but those who know, you know, they just, they can scan it. And, you, know. right. you have the website sure. URL immediately above it if you want more information. Exactly. Blah, blah, blah. Exactly. But, I, you know, I'm just thinking that that could ease people in and there's just, you know, so many ways. I love somebody, I guess it was, I think it was Jez's idea of putting them on the ends of rows of books. So that um, you know, so that they click it, and they don't get the Dewey necessarily. Or they might get the Dewey along with the subject areas, so that you know, in their hand, in their mobile device, mm -hmm. they can be walking down and kind of roughly figuring out, you know, oh gosh, I'm in, I'm in American history. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. I, what we had decided to do with that, it's a pending project. When I left, was to put the VR, the the V card, you know, the contact mm -hmm. information for the subject specialist, and a link to their LibGuide. Ooh, oh, right okay. there next to the book ranges so that if you're in the V's shopping for psychology or what have you in the VF's, then right there at the end of the book range was a QR code that would take you to the psychology librarian. And nice. that was, a, oh, that was a pending project when I left Claremont for QR codes. Yeah, yeah the, the most unique usage I've seen is I've been in the, down in the stacks of the Love Library at University of Nebraska Lincoln, and they'll have kind of what's on this floor which sections, and you scan the code, and because they know which floor you're on and, and which, which QR code you're scanning, it would then bring up on my phone a little map as to where I needed to go on the floor 
to actually get to that that call area. Um, so that and that, that was actually helpful. <laughs> well, they have these half floors and multi floors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we've been struggling with, for a long time with okay, how do you get that data to a, a mobile device when they're walking through the stacks? Yeah. Get them that mapping data without having to download a lot of information. You know, we wanted it to you know pop them to someplace on the web that was but that was dedicated to that, so they didn't look at a larger map that was dedicated to like that journey. Mm -hmm. So it's better idea. So, so I'm getting a sense that, <laughs> that mobile is something big at this conference. Yeah, 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 a little bit. <laughs> um, did anybody here attend the mobile track? I did. Uh, the other yeah. day, Jasmine. Yes, okay. Um, so, what, what, what do you hear, learn there besides QR codes? Well, I, I, I was very interested um, in mobile applications, and I just recently created a new website for my library using WordPress. We are a small resource light library and as a result I needed something that was quick and easy. So I attended uh, a lot of the sessions on how to think about creating a mobile website and the biggest conclusion I came to, the biggest takeaway is that if you are a resource light library and you do not have like a web person or a web server or any of that, um, making a mobile interface, a mobile web page was better than trying to create applications. And this is also really good for my community where we are very diverse as far as what smartphone you, or not smartphone that you may or may not have. Uh, so I did a little research and with the help of uh, Mariella, um, she helped me find a WordPress pack that I can install that enables me to make a mobile website based on the same sorts of widgets that you would install for Flickr or Twitter or what have you. Mm -hmm. So that is another thing that I learned about from this conference and will be taking back to my library to create a mobile website. Great. Great. So I would love to get a hold of that because I've got a couple of websites that I'm helping to oversee that are all WordPress based. And it really is just a drop dead simple interface. And, and, and as some, some people watching or listening may know, we're, we're doing WordPress based websites across the state of Nebraska right now. That's a project I'm running. So. Uh, nobody's asked me about mobile yet. They're, they're so far. <laughs> oh, we're passing out cards now. Uh, <laughs> um, do you remember the name of the the, the WordPress pack? Um, do you remember the name of that? No, but I can get it. Okay. <laughs> we're librarians. We can find anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what I've been saying for years. I don't remember anything. I just know where to look it look up. Look it up. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and what, what you just witnessed here is exactly what's been going on the last few days, is that somebody starts talking about, oh, I, I learned about this cool thing. Oh, really? I'd love to apply that in my library. How, you know, how could, you know, what did you hear about, about how easy it is to use or how much, how much server space it needs or whatever else? And, and those, these discussions just keep going on, uh, and then we kind of connect when we get back to our mm -hmm. real world <laughs> and try to figure out how to slot it into our daily lives. Good. So it is called WordPress <coughs> Mobile Pack. So okay. I'm sure you can just Google yes. WordPress mobile uh, PAC. PAC. Okay. And isn't that a that's a WordPress plugin? It's yeah, it's okay. some sort of a plugin. Mariella found it for me and so I immediately put it in the notes. It was at the Wonderful. time okay. that the web conference track didn't have web access. <laughs> <laughs> so she found it on her phone and let me know and I just put it in my notes and I haven't actually looked. But um, she said that, you know, based on the description that she found on her Blackberry that it would be able to mobilize so to speak, your WordPress mm -hmm. site. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the uh, the lack of internet access at a number of the venues uh, for the conference is a constant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah Marriott is a constant source <laughs> of uh, amusement and um, and frustration. frustration. <laughs> yes, uh, but we're you know those of us who've been here a couple of times are kind of used to it. So. And I'm beginning to wonder, you know, seeing an iPad in front of me, knowing my Droid is a couple of feet away, seeing an iPhone nearby, I'm beginning to wonder if that's going to matter. Mm -hmm. As much as mm -hmm. more and more people have some level of, wire, of um, 3G connectivity, 3G or 4G mm -hmm. contact. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I was surprised I haven't seen any MyFi's floating around. You know, we're, we're, we're I've yeah. seen my I've spots. seen oh. MyFi's listed, especially for the keynote. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, you interesting. You turn the okay. Wi-Fi on, and they're all locked down, so you can't actually. No. Okay. Connect well, to I mean, like side. like attendees bringing their MyFi and just sharing. So that, that would be people, nice. are, people are bringing them, they're not sharing. They're not that's, sharing. Okay. They're sharing in a limited fashion for their, their yeah. Yeah. Two years ago when I was here, um, my roommates and I went to a local radio shack, bought a wireless router because there was only a hard line for the hotel room we were staying in, and returned it at the three days later <laughs> the conference because we were no longer interested 
been keeping the product in Radio Shack. We were very suspicious about that, but it worked really well. And so we see a lot of this, I think, because... You didn't hear any of that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that on... Yeah. Ooh, yeah, this is being recorded. On the, um, yeah. um, the tubes now. Okay. Anyways, so I think that this is going to be a real issue, and, and you bring it up and seeing iPhones and, and iPads and things like that, but with the pricing structure, people still need to have... Yeah. The internet, yeah. you know, if, yeah, if you're paying for a low tier, 3G. Yeah. yeah, I mean it does, but I don't pay for that. Okay, right? so you're just using the Wi-Fi. Wi yeah, yeah. You know, I can't. I can't exactly work out my presentation on my right. cell phone yeah. yet. Yes. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, you need a little more than that for for those. You need to get one of those roll-up keyboards so you can. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and then you're done. <laughs> but I think that I think that conferences still really need to start emphasizing that because not everybody has the ability. I mean, think of all of our Canadian visitors mm -hmm. you know, who. who can't afford can't. the data plans they just out of the country. Yeah. Exactly. So they really need to have that, that free Wi-Fi yeah. available to them. Although I will say the power outlet situation this year has been wonderful. Yeah. Yes, yes, they, plenty of they, power. They, they love <laughs> I, think, I think that's the constant whining from the last few years. Of, uh, you know, people are thinking, and Michael, the first year I went to uh, Computers and Libraries, which is a, the companion um, one to this, uh, brought his own power strip and became very popular. Yeah, full size power strip in the back I, of the I room. I know a little portable one, but yeah. I, I yeah, I remember yeah. bringing a full size power. Strip. There are photos online yeah. of you know sixteen laptops. That's how, that's how, I, that's how I met yeah. Michael initially. He shared his power strip. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 Great. Um. So let's see. Um. On Monday there was also um there was a web presence. Uh, Learning and training. Actually, some of you presented in learning and training. Yes, That's nice. Yes, yes, yes. Um, in fact, this, what, what, this your first pre presentation oh, this gosh, year? No, no, no? I, oh, okay. Actually, I, I can tell a success story. Okay, please. Uh, tell, we'll get to fail in a minute. Fail's <laughs> <laughs> good. Yes. So I attended my first. Uh, Michael. Oh yeah. Can you move the microphone a little closer over there to Jennifer? Yeah, okay. It's not really picking her up very well. Don't spill your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the first time I've ever been told that. Um, I cool. just need to remember to project. So in 2006, I attended my first internet librarian here in Monterey, uh, along, tagging along with some bigger wigs at my library. And I was so completely blown away by what I heard and what I saw and the conversations I was overhearing that I came back under my own power in 2007 and decided I had enough to talk about to uh, step up and do a cyber tour. Uh, I had put in a presentation, it wasn't accepted, but they said, hey, would you like to do it as a cyber tour, which is a 15 minute uh, presentation that you do out in the vendor area. And I said, sure. So I did that. And it was a lot of fun and it encouraged me to go back and uh, put in another presentation uh, moving forward. I skipped 2008 for a number of reasons. But in uh, 2009, I f went to computers and libraries for the first time and proposed and had a presentation accepted for uh, 23 things using it with patrons rather than with staff. And then I did the same presentation here at, at Internet Librarian in uh, October of 2009, did it again at computers and libraries in the spring of this year, and that got Having had a few good presentations at a national conference under my belt, I now felt comfortable enough and crazy enough and had met Michael oh, that I put... It's not my fault. It is your fault. <laughs> Everything's um, always... This whole thing is your fault. Uh, <laughs> to put forward proposals for a pre-conference workshop and three presentations. And um, they were all accepted. <laughs> so I've been a little busy. Yeah, I've been a little busy for the past few days. So I haven't actually attended as many sessions as I would have liked because I was standing behind the podium instead of out in front of it. Uh, but it's been a lot of fun and I'm now today is my day for attending, which is great. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and I, I think there's a, a balance you have to try to find uh, <laughs> you know, when you come to any conference. And this, this includes even your state level conference. So if you're presenting, you know, it's, it's also especially hard if you're presenting like at the last hour of the last day. I've done that a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because you're kind of worrying about it throughout. So you have to do your best to kind of set that aside and enjoy the sessions and learn something, you know, up until the point about an hour before your presentation and then, and then get back in gear for that one. You know. yeah. and this, is, this is assuming you've already finished writing your presentation. Well, there's, there's that right. problem. Yeah, that's, that, was my, that was my conference. Um, but in fact, I think, 
even just the experience of kind of sitting there working on your presentation with people around you, um, you, you can listen to the conversations around you. You're always going to learn something as long as you're kind of centered in the space. Um, but you do have to find some sort of a balance between, because you're not going to get to every session. It's physically impossible. Yeah. You know, unless you're like Hermione Granger with a time turner, you're not going to make it. <laughs> so, you know, best best to just choose what what greatly interests you or what challenges you. Yeah. Like something you don't know anything about. Go sit through a session. Right? Yes. And maybe it won't make any sense to you for two or three years. But some of the things that I learned in in um, at CIL in 07 um, are only now becoming relevant to what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, I understood what they were, but I just knew I couldn't apply them. So. Well, there's, there's a tip in Foursquare on that. Somebody yes. left a tip in Foursquare to actually push your boundaries and go to a session that is only moderately related to what you do in order to identify as many connections as you can find that relate to what you are doing. And I thought that was a really useful and interesting tip that was left. Yes. And moreover, just attending a conference like this may be pushing your boundaries. When I attended, yeah. <laughs> yes. when, I when I attended in 2006, I was a generalist reference librarian out at a branch of the Boston Public Library. I had nothing to do with the back end. I had nothing to do with the technology. That was not anywhere in my job description. And But I was interested personally in it. And my uh, higher-ups knew that. And so they encouraged me to go to the conference. And I didn't understand the vast majority. I could see a little bit of how it worked, and I, I knew some of the words. But I, I knew some <laughs> of the words. You need a vocabulary lesson. You, you know, do. Yes. You really do. And, but I learned after attending, and I came home from the conference really excited <clears throat> and learned more on my own. And then I went to the next one and learned a little bit more. And you just, if, if it's something that you're not doing and not part of right now, but you're interested, Go anyway, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Because no one's no one's yeah. testing you on this. No one's asking you to come <laughs> right back and, yeah. and pass a quiz. <clears throat> you just develop that knowledge over time, and it's taken five years. But now I'm a web services librarian. And, well, and more to the point, the people who are giving the presentation make a point of talking to them if you can, getting their card, getting their you know, get, get at least getting their contact information. Scroll that away, and say you can even say. I saw you at you know, Computers and Libraries in 2006, and I, you were talking about such and such. Are you still working on that at all? Um, can I ask you a couple of questions? Mm -hmm. you know, and if they're, even if they're not, or if they've moved on to something else, they may be able to refer you to somebody who's working on Yeah, we just got up and spoke in front of a room of 250 people. We'll happily talk to you. Right. you, know, I, you yeah. know, so the speakers will always, and usually the next speakers have to kick out the previous speakers because yeah. they're still talking to people down front after, after their session. It's like, oh, I need to get mine now. Take it out in the hall. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and this is true. And even over the coffee and bagels in the morning, yep. you yep. might strike yeah. up a conversation. This gets mm -hmm. back to the lobby con and the value of that and the brainstorming that happens when side conversations begin. Yep. So, you know, this is it's very good to put yourself out there and push your boundaries because then all of a sudden you find yourself developing in ways that you didn't anticipate that only increases your ability to provide for your community. Yeah, just from breakfast yesterday morning I got a card from somebody who just started working at Google in some sort of training program and she wanted to she's like, We need to talk later. I'm like, Okay. Give <laughs> your coach, change cards, you know, we'll yep. we'll send some emails. Um, let me let me focus on one other thing from the uh, Monday's keynote. Um, I, I'll say for the record, the keynotes this year have been very interesting to me because they've been very different. Mm -hmm. um, those of us who attend regularly have kind of, the buzz has kind of been it's the same the same keynote people over yeah. and over and over and over again. And I keep trying to defend them by saying, but 25% of the audience almost every year is somebody who's never been at this conference before. It's us regulars who, who hear Lee Rainey every, you know, twice a year for five years. This year they got people kind of completely out of left field. And so the buzz over the weekend was, who are these people? You know, it's like, no, you can't win. Um, but Monday morning, uh, you know, Patricia Martin, um, who, just for reference, I guess she pretty much started the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, as, as I understand it. She's, oh. oh, yeah. I mean, she's, she's, she's up there. Um, yeah. But she talked about kind of like the future of libraries and, and the way she put it, and I want to get people's reflections on this, is that, Libraries need to be where people have dwell time. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Yeah. So I guess would, would would somebody like to try to defend or define dwell time, uh, and 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 figure out you know we, we all agree okay 
what is dwell time and why do we agree with this? Well, on the easiest <laughs> level, it's where people spend their time. Mm -hmm. It's but not just where they spend their time, but where they spend their time when they're actually paying attention. Um, and when they're actually open to ideas and open to things that are coming at them. As opposed to at work where they might be focused on the particular tasks that are in front of them, the, the dwell time, as I understand it, is more the, it's those other times. It's those, it's those times when you can catch their attention. And I, I think this comes from a marketing perspective of getting you know, their eyeballs on your product. Um, but you've got to make sure that they're present and aware and available to receiving your product. Um, so I know there was a little bit of that. <laughs> I kind of look at it from the Sims perspective, right? So you have your, as, the, as you're playing the Sims, you have your green plus bar, right? Okay. And then you have your red negative bar. And the people come to the library for green plus time. They do not make it an errand. They come in and even if they know that they want to check out six new fiction books, they let their kids play the games on the computer and look at the puppets and the turtles. They might sit and do the puzzle for a while. You have turtles? We have turtles. We have, we have turtles. Oh, cool. We okay. have so. turtles. <laughs> and, you know, so they, they come in, but it's, it's a very pleasure-oriented time. It's not like going to the grocery store, going to the bank, or going to the, uh, run these other errands that we must do. It's a whole different subset of that, where you allow yourself time time to interact, engage, enjoy, and so that's how I took the dwell time concept is that people are sitting in a library building and they're having green plus and they're adding to their <laughs> happiness bar, right, because they are enjoying their time looking and interacting with people and online resources and print materials and turtles. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm envisioning a video here to get to the animation of what somebody said. I'm seeing yeah. green bar I'm going seeing up. The commercials right now. Yeah. <laughs> library commercials right there, little postcards. Okay. Um, somebody also mentioned, I mean, honestly, I, I kind of looked at dwell time a little different because somebody to me mentioned yesterday the uh, library in Schiphol Airport. Yeah. In, yes. In Amsterdam. Yes. And they were they were kind of saying, you know, the, 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 or where? Was Donna Schneider, I think. Donna, Donna mentioned it. Oh, yeah, that's right. And in that, like, you know, time in the airport could be well time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't really have yeah. anything else to do. But again, that comes from that marketing that's, perspective. Okay. Yeah, uh, right. These are places where they're, okay, let's let's put it bluntly, they're trapped. <laughs> you're yes. I mean, I mean yes. seriously, yes. When you're in an airport, you're trapped, and yet, is it possible to make that a transformative experience time? And I think this yes. comes from that, you know, that, that wonderful um, uh, study that was, came out a couple years ago, OCLC and others did, that was talking about on that grid of sort of educational to transformative, where do libraries, you know, and we're trying to move libraries into that transformative corner of this grid. And I think, <coughs> you know, things like the library in Skipple Airport really help that because you're saying, okay, you're in this space where you might not necessarily think about this product, the product being the library, but lo and behold, here we are and we're providing you with this space. And not only that, but we're providing you with a space that is unique in this environment. Um, a quiet place, a place to contemplate, a place to um, perhaps recharge. And, oh, and by the way, remind you about libraries. I was say, yeah. And it's, it's a unique in that environment, but it's also deeply familiar. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. People yes. understand, even yeah. if they've never been in a library or they haven't been in 25 years, they un many, not all, um, a lot of lot of new immigrants from other countries in our in Boston, and many of them have never even believed in the concept of a pub, a free public library. So that, there's a, an education there. But for many many other people, a library is an anchor point. They understand it. They mostly get how it works. And so if they see blah 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 library in a new space, in a new place, in a place they didn't expect it, it's something fun and familiar to hold on to and say, oh, I know what a library is, I know what to expect there. And it might be different than it used to be, but it still, it, it gets them in the door and it gives them that, that moment of connection, that, that moment of a green plus. Well, and I think the part of the point <coughs> was that we need to be in those spaces, we can't just count on the physical spaces we already have yep. to Ooh, draw yeah. them in, because the reality is they're running around, they're mobile, they're virtual yeah. now. So we need to be in the spaces where they are. We need to be on their phones. We need to be, you know, where they're looking every five seconds, usually in traffic. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, we need, we need to be, 
out in the community. We need to be at the mall. We need to be, you know, all of those things we've talked about for many, many years, and sometimes have made work and sometimes haven't. But the reality now is it's becoming increasingly virtual, and people's lives are becoming increasingly scattered. So if we yeah. can kind of be in those places where they are as often as possible, in a light way. You know, it doesn't have to be a big, heavy way either. Mm -hmm. It's just a, hey, you know what, I wonder if, if the library has that book. Oh, look, on my phone I can check right really quick. Rather than having to call up or having right. to, you know, go through the Internet and find the website, you know. But no, there's an app where right. they just click the app. Because, you know, they're not going to just open up Safari and go through that and search for the library and try to remember the URL. They're going to want an app to go boom, 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 search. It's, you know, yes, they have it. It's checked in. I'll put a hold on. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I think that's, you know, we dwell now in a lot of different places. And it has little or nothing to do with our physical space, mm -hmm. more often than not. I think you're right. And this, this makes me realize that we really need to emphasize the level of comfort with our dwell space. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm thinking about how... You're saying at this airport they're trapped, they're a captive audience. And how many times have I watched the uncomfortable dad loitering in the front of my library mm -hmm. while his wife is shopping in fiction and his children are playing with the puppets? And he's just kind of standing there. So how could I make that space comfortable? I started to put the magazines up there in the front Ooh, and, okay. and uh, yep. you know, different chairs. I'm buying love seats. So that I can encourage, go out and approach this, this you know, father and say, would you like to read Field and Stream? Here's a fishing. Uh, well, this yep. is Idaho, right? Yeah, you're right, right. So right. here's Field and Stream. Exactly. Right, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Don't you know? hand him Cosmo unless you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, because we need to think about how we make that space comfortable and how we make it easy for them and enjoyable right. for them. And if they are going to consider it a place where they need to dwell either by choice or because they are a captive audience, how do we make it a green plus experience mm -hmm. for our people? Mm -hmm. And that's another point to take about the conference itself. It's called Internet Librarian. The focus is on computers and technologies. But very often, things that you learn, ideas that spark, will have a real world brick and mortar application as well. Yes. Because yes. it's, and even just as some, something as straightforward as putting the chair, the comfy chairs and the magazines up at the front of your building. You'll, you'll hear a concept that is presented about an electronic space, but then you can apply it to your real world spaces. So again, even if you're not doing technolog technological stuff, there might be still something there that you can bring back and immediately apply. And it's all about those immediate applications of what you've learned. Sure. Now, here, here's something else that, that Chris and I ran into, and she, she's heard me now. This figure has stuck in my head for, for four days now. At our pre-conference, we had somebody from a larger county library system here in California, I don't remember exactly which one, he said that with this, the system they have set up, you have to use your library card to, to sign on to the computers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so they know yep. who signed on to the computers, and they know, because you have to use your library card to check out a book, who's checked out a book. Right. So they actually ran the numbers, and they have only a 15% overlap yeah. between those yeah. two populations. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so that. he, he's looking at pretty much two distinctly different Member groups. I'm trying to use member instead of users now because I, I, I watched another thing about they want to be called members. Um, they have a card. They pay their taxes. That's their membership fee. They're members yeah, of the yeah. library. Okay. I, I like this. And I, I, I do too. I, awesome. Somebody yeah. actually asked their patrons, what do you want to be called? And they came up with members. But anyways, so they have two very distinct member groups in their library. How, how do we deal with that? Well, the question that I have is in addition to pulling the statistics on use, did they pull the statistics by age? Is it that the... If they 50, did, he didn't have that in, with him. He, yeah. he just mentioned this. But I think that would be an interesting... Absolutely. <laughs> so if we look at my environment, a majority of the people who take advantage of my library services do not have Internet at home. Right. Mm -hmm. Their children also are latchkey children, and they come mm -hmm. into the library after school, which is fine. We have a wonderful community. They are very well-behaved children. They do not take advantage and abuse the library. They're very respectful. They do spend a lot of time playing games. They spend a lot of time doing Facebook. Um, they don't necessarily check materials out because of arbitrary rules based on how you are allowed to check out and create library cards and so on and so sure. forth. And so I would like to see additional data on the age groups, because I do think that the way that the generations interact 
with material plays into a part of that. And that part of that 15% are the people who do come in and take advantage of doing research on the stocks or maybe look at consumer reports, but then at the same time take away their fiction. So I'm very interested in seeing where those two in yeah. a Venn diagram intersect <laughs> and what contains that intersection. Well, and I, and I can tell you in, in our library, they intersect from 2.30 to 5.30 every yeah. afternoon. <laughs> and, not, and, and not happily, because they, they'll give a, a ninth grade school, that's a quite large school, it's mm -hmm. a thousand kids or whatever. Oh, you have a zoo. Excellent. We have a zoo. We have a zoo for 14 year olds. And, uh, you know, and bless their hearts, their little hormones with feet. And they're, um, they're empty inside when they get to our. So luckily we have a cafe. And actually, the best thing we ever did was get a cafe and put a state trooper in charge of it. Uh, he's, a, he's, an ex, he's an ex state trooper and he, he went into food service and he's wonderful. He's wonderful with the teens. He's like the best guy. He's great with the teens because he learns every one of their names. When they walk in, he knows their name and you know a little bit about what they're interested in. And Just that will kind of keep them yeah. under control. Yeah. Well, no, that. seriously, yeah. we, had a terrible, we had a terrible problem before that with a little like mini gang. I mean, we're in this like affluent suburb, so it's just, you know, but we had this like mini gang of rich kids, but it was just, you know, yeah. but still it was, it was an issue and we just didn't have the staff to kind of cope with it because we have a large spatial area where we didn't have eye shot, which was just a bad design thing. But it, it, what's interesting to me is that they do intersect there. They do intersect on the computers where the kids want to play their games and do their Facebook and, you know, talk trash about their friends. And there's still people there who've been there since 9 a.m. when we opened who have been working on their resumes all day and they want to print and suddenly they can't because we're having network problems because of all the people playing games. And, and it is a genuine problem, and I think the data I would get, in fact, I know the data I would get would support that confluence. And so my, you know, how do I make that a transformative space for everybody all the time? How do I make that, that 2.30 to 5.30 time, you know, before everybody goes home for dinner, you know, useful to everybody without conflict? is where I kind of run into it. And there are technological solutions, which is what I come here to find out about, in terms of you know, increasing our, um, our network feed and making sure that our time and current management system isn't the, frankly, piece of crap it is now, so you know, replacing that, talking to the vendors about that. In fact, I, I spent a lot of time this conference talking to vend other vendors of other time and current management systems saying, please help me, I'm drowning. Um, and they, in them giving me some potential solutions. So that's very helpful. So I can go back and say, okay, for this service problem, I have a partial technological solution I could, I'm going to try to implement. But then I may also have some other ones that I've learned from sitting around, you know, talking to my colleagues yeah, in these spaces about, about, well, you know, what we do is we make sure that we have such and such a program available. Oh, well, that's a great idea. Let me take that back to our program person. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's talk about that because I'm in the same boat. Um, I'm a little bit, a few steps behind because I'm still trying to, <clears throat> excuse me, find a print management and That's authentication all. system. Yeah. So I would very much like to hear that. And then I can share with you some of the things that we've done as far as programming and mm -hmm. space restrictions mm -hmm. that have helped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and we have, you know, we have a very open plan. So yes, that's something I struggle with yep. yeah. in our space. Yeah. Cool. So, and you can see how... It's, this yeah. is not just, it's not just technology. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, in right. fact, that's just technology is a tool. And, and I think everybody who's here, yeah. mostly everybody who's here, understands that the, it, they are tools to a greater purpose. They are not there for the sake of being there, although some of them are just really, really cool and you just want to find out about yeah. them right. because they're neato. And but. that's important, too, because yeah. that's what energizes you as, right. a, as a professional. You're, or, and wherever you are on library staff, we are all professionals, darn it. Um, and, okay. so, yep. and so those... Coming here, at least in part for yourself, is okay. Yep. Supporting yeah. your own interests, supporting your yeah. own energy levels, supporting your own, you know, boom moments yeah. um, is mm -hmm. vital because it really re can reinvigorate you and your oh, yeah. interest in your yeah. profession. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, that's actually why I started coming to this. I was still a student in library school, and <coughs> my program was still kind of trying to figure the technology thing out. And so there wasn't so much in my program to, to learn this stuff. And I heard about the conference and decided, OK, yeah, I want to go. So um, hey, Michael. Let's, let's Yes. yes, this is Krista. Hi. Um, just, I just have a few comments from um, one of our attendees on this on the session live. Um, we have a Maurice Coleman from Hartford County Public Library. Hey, hi, say hi, Mo. Yeah. <laughs> he is logged in. Um, he says uh, GoToWebinar doesn't 
uh, play nice with his computer, so apparently I guess he can't talk, but um, he, he said that Louise is an awesome presenter for anyone who's attending to definitely attend any of her <laughs> presentations. Um, and he would like to invite everyone to come to uh, their November 5th Tea is for Training workshop, his Tea is for Training podcast. Um, and uh, call into that and talk the same thing about what you guys had, uh, your impressions of the conference. Um, oh, okay. Oh, so he's inviting okay. us. Well, yeah. Anybody yeah. listening and watching? Listening. Yes, T is for training. It's a, it's a wonderful podcast. Maurice, we miss you here. Um, yeah. Yeah, Maurice, oh. Maurice usually comes to these things. Um, <clears throat> great, thanks. Um, okay, so we, we got a few more minutes uh, to talk here, and then we've got a keynote to go to. Um, but so so let's end on a high note. Let's talk about failure. Yes. Yay. <laughs> there was a whole I was hoping you would ask about that one. I was very interested yes. in that track as I had to leave yes. before it really yeah, got going. Awesome. It was it was great. Great. We awesome. literally had a fail track yesterday. And and there was even a contest as to who failed the worst or best. I don't yeah, know. And the person who won the actually the, the what she was talking about was identical to an experience I had gone through twice in the last 10 years, which was basically a website redesign that went badly, badly wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and somehow, as the librarian, she had been put in charge. Well, I did the same thing, where I was in charge of all these people from a larger city. and So I was having flashbacks as she was giving her, her fail presentation. And, and seriously, I was literally, literally shaking in my chair, remembering yeah. the experience. Yeah. And I went up to her afterwards, and she's sort of a pal of mine. And I was like, thank you, because I need to remember those failures in order not to repeat them, because we're about to go through another redesign. And so I was I was very grateful to hear that A, I was not alone, which is very important, yes. and B, that, you know, okay, we're, we're, remember not to do that again. <laughs> okay, well, and, and I love it that out of um, fail camp came a fail wiki. Yes. Yes, yes. Because, yes that's right. That's you know, right. I, and think yeah. about it. In the Kendra put it up yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah Kendra put it up that it's live. Um, but think about it, you know, it was a very valid point that was brought up. We publish what works. Yeah. That is what our publishers want. We publish what works. They don't want to hear about how we really flopped on our faces. That doesn't get published and accepted. So we can't share. And then we do have the cycle of reinventing the wheel because we don't know what didn't work. We didn't hear about these experiences that other people are having. So being able to create a shared environment, a wiki, where we can talk about our absolute failures, I thought that was brilliant. And so now we'll have a yeah. place to see what didn't work and how it may or may not apply to the situations that we are in. Well, yes. It, the, the, what, what actually happened was the, um, somebody during that session called Fail Camp said, well, we have the library success right. wiki. Right. We should have a library fail wiki. Right. And Kendra... Right in the front row went, I'll set it up, and by the end of the session, I think it was live. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. she did, did, did it right there. That's I've actually, Wi-Fi. Yeah. I've actually <laughs> been thinking about this for my statewide. I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm on my state association, and it's actually important. And one of the things that I think we, we have a hard time with is admitting to each other, especially, I think it's almost easier to admit to near strangers, uh, you know, who oh, don't yeah. know what they're <laughs> so, Like, I can sit around with a bunch of people over a beer at Internet Librarian and say, oh, my God, let me tell you about this horrific failure. But I think talking to your colleagues who are in your state who have a, a, a lot more stake in you being successful and a lot more potential um, harsh words for you if yeah. you don't, that I think that's harder. And I want to break that mold. Yeah. I'm really, I'm, I'm very much wanting to have an Iowa library failure wiki, in, you know, and <laughs> in, 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 you know, linking to the larger in the sense of here's some great failures that we learned from, yeah. you know, and kind of take it from that perspective because it's not about oh this was just terrible and we keep doing it over and over again. That's not a failure. That's bad management. And I mean, it's a failure, yeah. but it's a yeah. failure you're not doing anything about. If we keep doing it over and over again, again, that's that you know AA definition of insanity. Yeah. Of doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Let's change the results by sharing. You know, I, I, it's sort of a therapeutic response to failure. You know, <laughs> if we share them, we're more likely to come up with solutions. We're much more likely to come up with answers. And in that vein. You know, my biggest success was also one of my biggest failures because I could not get peer buy-in. Mm -hmm. And I could not get mm -hmm. management support, yep. even though I had faculty and dean, faculty dean support. Um, so perhaps being able to be more honest about how we do need to actually help each other 
in our places of employ. We do need to buy in, we do need to support, and by being able to make some of the failures more public, maybe that will get the message across that yes, you actually do need to kind of pull on your, your tough pants and do what you need to do what's in the greater good. That's yeah, Maurice has good. some good comments about that as well. Um, talking about administrators, sometimes bad management is the failure that you're having, and even if they exactly. don't seem to say it, they want to know what doesn't work to save time and money and why it didn't work. Yep. Right. And, and he and even put up a quote from, from Gandhi to make the change you want to see in the world. Right. Yep, there you go. Right. And I, I think also that when you, when you look at it, you get, when you put it outside your head, let's just put it that way, we can all kind of go over the hamster wheel in our head over and over again. But there's a point where if you put it out, and especially if you put it out on the inner tubes uh, for people to see, there is a point where you can look at it with a certain amount of perspective and perhaps come yeah. up with your own solution in a way that you just can't when you're running it through your head and through your blame, you know, all of your blame channels in your head. And you're so emotionally tied to it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer, you found the wiki? I have indeed. The, the URL is pure and simple. Failbrary.org. <laughs> F-A-I-L-B-R. A-R-Y. Oh, bless the Pedra's heart. I love it. <laughs> failbury.org. All right. It's our heart. So everybody who's listening to this, go to failbury.org um, and contribute your failures. Yes, we, we, we will be sympathetic. We promise. <laughs> One of the other things that I'd like to share that sure. was really revolutionary for me in fail camp was the identifying of benchmarks, right? Mm -hmm. So there was two things. There was, there was the fail marks. How do you identify and set a fail mark for something that now must die because it is not working? When we plan and when we think of assessment, we don't necessarily think of fail marks. Yep. No, we don't no. consider what means this is not working and it is squandering right. precious resources. Yeah, right. And that's something we need to think about in planning and strategically thinking about where we want to go. The other thing was fail safing, your con you know, mm -hmm. contingency plans. Yeah. What are you going to do if something yeah. doesn't work or users do it differently. Right. And those were two very poignant thoughts for me about the whole process of fail and learning from your fail is that we need to start really thinking about this kind of stuff because we outline how we want it to go and how we think it goes, but we don't necessarily think about the other part. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, th I love what when Matt Hamilton was talking about the anything model, which mm -hmm. I, I'm very excited about. I know a lot of people have been giving them grades. But I'm very excited about it because I think it's, it's what we need to look at. The, uh, this is a, a system in, a library system in Colorado that's basically turned itself on its head and become something far more interesting. Um, what I liked was that try for 80%. We try for 80%. Yeah. I, I love that, 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 that they made the assumption that it wouldn't necessarily be perfect the first time, and that was okay. And then what you did was you then worked for the other 20% once it was implemented. But you actually implemented at, at as low as 80% fully done. So you didn't nitpick at it, nitpick at it, and then not make it available to anybody until it was you know, no longer useful. You, you threw it out there you know, with planning and so forth, but you got it up to that at least 80% and then let it fly and then, and then did feedback loops from that to make it better. Okay, um, I, I think we're going to wrap this up. I, I want to give a, everybody here a, a chance to maybe say one more thing about the conference or why you should attend or what you got out of it or, um, you know, and, and you don't have to say anything about you know, around the table here, but um, just any last thoughts before we kind of wrap this up? I have to say that this has been one of the most revolutionary internet librarian CIL conferences I've ever attended because I was academic for eight years and I had a huge comfort zone with my very academic, very tech heavy, big bang theory user world, you know, and now all of a sudden I'm making these beautiful connections with public librarians and we're talking about the same sorts of issues that now are in this world that I live with. And to me, it was just a very therapeutic, invigorating conference more than it has been for any other because I feel like I have serious takeaways and even deeper community because of the days I spent here.
similarly, I this is the first conference I've been at where I really knew people when I got here. And Michael, that's all your fault. Uh, um, you're welcome. Yes, because I, I mentioned computers and libraries this past spring, and it's all gone from there. And making those connections, I'm believe it or not, I'm a shy, quiet, retiring person if I don't know people well, and I. I'll take your word for and it. a librarian, wow, well, imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a reference librarian. And it took a lot of effort for me to make those connections this past spring, and I am reaping the benefits of this conference. I have had more, and it's not about making the connections, it's about making a deeper connection. Yeah. It's about actually yeah. believing that I'll go home and now talk to these folks, these fabulous, fabulous folks in this room, um, and make those connections and keep those connections and keep that those thoughts bubbling in my head. Yeah. And that's, for me, that's been my big. Yeah, that's, that's actually been the most, uh, the biggest thing for me at all of the conferences. This is my, my fourth. And I'm always amazed. Every time I come, since the first time I came and started meeting people, I both get to see the people that I only get to see in real life here, because I don't go to computers and libraries farther than I really want to travel. But I always also meet new people who I know I'm going to get to see next year and who I'll be keeping in touch with Networking throughout the year. It's huge. great. Yeah. Yeah. The networking is so It's like Kim and I are going to be talking. Yeah, exactly. 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 Yeah. And of course, you know, every once in a while I might be traveling to Boston. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Well, and for me, it's like, you know, I've known Jez actually for a little while through mutual friends, but since she's, she was an academe, it was like, okay, we had things to talk about, but now I'm like, I can help her. <laughs> and I'm all excited because that's, you know, that's what I'm all about, and so I'm excited that yet my 14 years of horror with the time and Caribbean <laughs> will now be useful to someone, so that makes me very happy. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. This is wonderful. This I, I think this went swimmingly. I'm glad I could get you all up at, at Oh, Dark and Ugly uh, to... Uh, to do this for um, us who are time zone challenged. Um, and uh, so that is it, I think, for today from the Internet Librarian. And Krista, we'll send it back to you for wrap up. Okay, great. Thank you very much, everyone. I'm so glad that you all did the talking rather than me. As anyone who knows, my voice does not normally sound like this. <laughs> uh, this is the. I, I'm at work. <laughs> I made it here. Um, but are you feeling better? <laughs> yes, I am. I'm better than I was Monday night. Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, got myself all drugged up and ready to go. <laughs> so I'm going to take back, I think, control here and show. Um, I just wanted to uh, let everyone know that all of the uh, links that were mentioned today, I believe this is the one that had to do with WordPress, um, Failbrary, uh, that the fail, share your library failures, um, and the T is for training podcast that um, you can, the next one is November 5th. Those will all be included in the recording for um, the session so you'll be able to see um, all of those links. And I uh, hope you'll join us next week at Uncampus Live when we will have a similar session to this one, actually, um, about our, our state conference, NLA NEMA Annual Conference, was uh, two weeks ago. And we will have um, people from that conference sharing their conference highlights. So thank you very much. Thank you, everyone in Monterey. Uh, go get yourself some coffee, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.